Hello, sirs, madams, and everyone else. Welcome to Unlisted Force Presents GTA Online Pacifist Mode. Can you complete missions without killing anyone? Or, better known as, Gatau PM Kaikom Wicker. Yes, we were inspired by some YouTuber, possibly named Dark Viper AU, but we'll try our best to basically not steal his shtick. Today, I'll be trying to complete the following GTA Online contract missions without killing anyone. These missions are, all in the game, Chasers, Chasers 2, Checkout Time, Crank Up the Volume, Editor and Thief, and Flood in the LS River. It is my goal to complete these missions without killing any enemies, cops, or cop enemies. If I need to kill an enemy to progress the mission, I will try and find an accidental or indirect way of disposing of said enemy. Go be if this does not work, I will melee the enemy. If I have to kill an enemy, I will look for the minimum number of enemies which have to be eliminated. If I am doing a heist, I must leave with at least one USD. I am not allowed to kill any civilians. Damn! Since GTA Online drivers are a lot more fragile than the ones in story mode, after any vehicular collision I'll be checking on the welfare of the occupants before making a hit and run. If I inexplicably mortally wound a civilian, I am obligated to blow myself up to restart the mission. Other methods of restarting the mission may apply. Unarmed fleeing enemies do not count as civilians in this case. After some consultation with the Australian Animal Welfare Authority, I am to avoid killing animals, but that's only if they spawn in GTA Online. In this case, I'll be doing these missions by myself, but in the future, we might see some additional players. My god sir, additional players? Well, yes. It is definitely cheating to say that I completed a mission in pacifist mode if I let another player kill the enemies. So, when I do bring in help, they will also be bound by the rules outlined. And finally, I will only use the Meriwether helicopter support as a last resort. With that out of the way, let's start with All in the Game. In this mission, reputable car salesman and dealer Simeon Yatarian asks us to repossess a bowler from a low income area. Unfortunately, when we get there, there are four young men who are not willing to hand me the keys. As per usual, I first tried calling the police on some young African American men minding their own business, but 911 failed to take the call. I tried again, and I believe they blocked me. I tried heading to the police station, but it turns out no one went to work that day. My next plan was to start some gang warfare between the bowlers and the families. However, as it turned out, I'm not Franklin Clinton, therefore the families were hostile to the asshole in an armored Karuma. As I later found out, the families' NPCs are still hostile to Baller's NPCs. However, the four NPCs spawned for this mission likely did not have the same exact relationship group as normal generic Baller's NPCs. Therefore, gang warfare could not clear out the streets this time. I tried heading to the Maze Bank Arena to get the help of the security guards. However, only world spawned bowlers NPCs would follow me. Also, only two of the four mission spawned enemies would actually abandon their posts to track me down. So, I had an issue. Then, hitting me like a freight train, I had an idea. While tow trucks do not exist in GTA Online, I could use the armored Karuma to push the bowler just far away enough that I could get in the bowler without getting killed. Then, all I had to do was drive back to Mr. Yuterian's reputable business and get the cash for delivering a beaten up SUV. Perfect! Well, not perfect, but it will do for now. Perfection is a cruel mistress. So, you can complete all in the game without killing anyone. Yay. We now move to Chasers. 
In this mission, we help philanthropist at heart, Simeon Yetarian, get back a coquette. All you have to do is hijack some poor sap's car and get it back to the dealership. Due to my incompetence, this mission took quite a while, so here's some advice. Number one, don't start the mission while on Kayo Perico, because you were spawned in the ocean. Thanks, Rockstar. Number two, don't crash into an innocent mother returning home from work. You'll have to blow yourself up. And number three, actually do a good job hijacking, or else you have to participate in a short pursuit. After using the traditional tactic of ramming someone off the road and into a tree, I was able to get the coquette, get some free lead, dodge the police, and return the car to Mr. Yetarian. Thank you, my boy, thank you. I am honored to call you my son by another mother, if you know what I mean. Ah, peace and love. <laughs> you have done me proud. <laughs> So, with that, you can complete chases without killing anyone. Huzzah! Now that I know not to start the mission whilst on Cayo Perico, to not assault innocent mothers, and to do a proper hijacking, repossessing the tornado, or Tornado, was very easy on chases too. I almost didn't even notice the kind chaps shooting at me. Unlike the past two vehicles, Mr. Simeon Man received a car with only some scratches, broken glass, and some American bullet holes. Interesting! Interesting! Well done! And with that, you can complete chases too, and therefore both chases missions, without killing anyone. <coughs> Celebration, people! For Crank Up the Volume, I'm not going to spend too much time on this very easy mission. The hardest part was stopping the RV without destroying it. This is our kill. Shit! The bikers weren't very enthusiastic to give up the RV, but with some light persuasion, I was able to get a hold of it and bring it back to fan favorite Chef. Shit, Trevor, we ain't got long. Whoa, 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 manners, Ash. Please, Chef, my boy. With that, you can complete crank up the volume without killing anyone. <laughs> Season's greetings. And now we'll be going to the intermission. Knock, knock. Oh, Dave here. We're in a bit of a crisis situation here in paradise. Now, the kind of music lads have been hit with a bad case of the munchies. They're after pizza, specifically. And only something from the mainland will do. I don't suppose you can see your way to flying some over. Business class. Ah, oh, you're a beautiful soul, you know that. I thought we were going under for a second there. Grab a couple of pies and get them airborne pronto. Hey kids, adults and people on their deathbed, today we're going to see if we can deliver pizza without killing anyone. The main problem is to get the innocent delivery driver off his bike. As a minimum wage worker, he is the enemy. However, on two different runs of this mission, I managed to get a hold of the bike. From that point on, all you have to do is drive to the Los Santos International Airport and deliver pizza. Do we have a lift off? Perfecto! I think young Ramper might be about to pass out at the dicks. With that, I conclude that you can deliver pizza without killing anyone. <laughs> That's not going to pay the bills. So the last four missions were quite simple. Steal a car and win. 
Now, we're going to move to two missions where Mr. Martini Madrosco asks us to murder. Now, I will say to Mr. Madrosco that murder is wow wow. Yeah. The correct move is to not play these missions, therefore saving countless lives. However, that is boring. So, let's see if we can complete checkout time without killing a single soul. Now, this might spoil the next mission, but I thought about using a cargo bob to kidnap the witness women and perhaps induce a suicide, like any good pacifist would. However, I was unable to get a grip on her convertible. No! So, I went to plan B, hijack a bus, Lock the entrance to the police car park, and... What the fuck is your problem? Shit. Shit. Forget I'm doing this in pacifist mode. Shit. Yeah, so, I was too fixated on trying to not kill the trusted women, that I accidentally got into a shootout, and perhaps wounded, or maybe permanently paralyzed, several law enforcement Shit. officers. Since I was fed up, I kept this going, and then this happened. The police killed the witness who had dirt on Mr. Martin. This was a good sign. However, I couldn't really count this mission as a pacifist run, given the countless shirts I have stained. So, let's try again with a more pacifist leaning. The plan was simple. Lock the entrance to the police station, and get the police to kill the witness. Now. I believe the police killed the traitorous woman since she might have accidentally backed up into a police officer, hence triggering their blood rage. I doubt it was because she was in the crossfire, since the police killed an innocent woman who harmlessly backed up into a police officer. As you can see, the LSPD has failed the pacifist challenge. <laughs> All I had to do was get the witness to bump into a cop and then have the police kill her. So, I got into Mi Kanjali to survive the one-way shootout long enough for the women to accidentally hurt the police. The bus plan failed because, like most buses Bye. made in Canada, it despawns when you look away. So, I now needed a big vehicle. I wished I could have used my nightclub vehicles, but the game said no. Therefore, I use a mule. As it turns out, the witness had legs. Two of them, in fact. She was just able to walk around the mule once she destroyed her own car. So, back to the drawing board. Luckily, at the beginning of the mission, you start with a shafter. Since this was spawned by the mission, I made the assumption that it does not despawn when you look away. This car was very useful in avoiding collateral damage from driving the Kanjali to the police station owned by the sheriffs. Thanks, Mr. Mama Madrazzo. Best of all, the Pegasus mule remained where I left it between attempts. This meant all I had to do was park the shaft in such a way it blocked the entrance with the mule and waited for the police to kill the witness women. And so, the wait begins. All I had to do was take a photo of the body and return to Mr. Madrazzo. I, using a clever move known as hiding, dodged a police car by doing the third most suspicious thing to do when a police car is coming down the road. Perfect! 
pleasure doing business with you. I got me cash and successfully completed the mission without killing anyone. As per usual, murder by cop is the way to go. And that does not bring us to edit and feet. This wipe does. Welcome to Editor and Fee. Today we're going to murder an innocent editor who nearly stumbled on Martin Madrazo's greatest secret. I now have the option of editing in some My Little Pony photos or the photos from the end of the Cayo Perico heist, but I'd do neither. Yeah, more like the LS For Christ's sake! I first tried hijacking the poor editor, but for some reason he got spooked by the person coming at him with malintent. I tried pursuing him, but he got to the cops just in time. For my second attempt, I tried some Portuguese roughhousing, better known as vehicular assault. A man should get the editor stuck, but after destroying his own bloody car, he started running on foot. Fucking hell, man. I think you'll find that oh. The LS traffic did not kill him, much to my dismay. Instead, the editor hijacked some poor guy's car. And no, I do not consider shooting out the tires as being against the rules. I tried to get the police to kill him by getting him in a crossfire. While trying to trap him, I died. This being GTA Online, the mission isn't over. Still intent on getting him in a crossfire, I borrowed a truck from Jeff and blocked the editor in. I then went to get the armored groomer to at least survive the police shootout. While the truck did not despawn, the other car did. I tried getting the jolly driver onto the railway tracks to let the trains deal with him. Unfortunately, the fella broke his car and then made a run for it. You fucker. I was very happy to know that he would go aggro and get into a fight. However, none of the pedestrians sought to aid me. The editor then remembered he was trying to get police protection. Desperate to not let him leak important martini secrets, I punched him and didn't seek help. I finished the mission with one kill. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant! I love you in an appropriate way. I like what I said to the bishop. This was not good enough. Yeah, yeah, I mean. The next day, I tried again with a bit more thought. Naturally, I kidnapped the editor with a cargo bomb. I wanted to take him to the FIB headquarters, but it wasn't a nice place to make someone fall off a building. Instead, I took him to the Maze Bank Tower, hoping to have him drive off to cause his own death. Instead, he landed on his roof, got into a fist fight, and had his car despawn. Not knowing what else to do, I accidentally caught him away with a helicopter pickup who did not know how to share a helipad. Our pilot is unable to land at your location. A full refund. Cock. Hello, you're through to Meriwether Security Consulting. What can I do for you? Christ. A helicopter will be with you shortly. Oh, 
Even worse, the Meriwether support refused to fire on an unarmed man attacking an unarmed lady. They simply watched and ate up the 5k. Those bastards. Unbelievable. And that's us nearly out of fuel and heading home. With no other choice, I tried to make the editor fall off the building. However, I fell off. I thought I could get him to jump down as well, but he didn't. So I chose to restart the mission. My new plan was to get him to the countryside where the locals are less appreciative of a fist fight. The only issue is that while I got the editor's car my first try, every other try was a lot more... I finally got the editor and his car. I took both to the countryside, scouting for a good roof that the editor might be reluctant to hop down from when this happened. The editor left to his death. I'm going to assume he thought he was a cat, which was a fatal error. Hey, it's me from editing. I think the editor jumped out of his car because I released it while it was still in the air. However, I am certain that since the car survived the fall, had the editor not jumped out, he would have survived as well. Therefore, the whole suicide thing was due to his AI and less because I released the car. So, I'm going to count this as a pacifist way of disposing of an enemy, even if it is quite cheap. Back to your scheduled programming. With the editor now dead by his own doing, with my assistance of course, I waited for the cops with phone neck to not look up. Calling for some wheels? I'm Johnny on the spot. I'll hook you up. After that, I picked up the photos and handed it to the Mr. Sir Captain Madrazo III. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I love you. In an appropriate way, I mean. If I didn't, you would be dead, of course. While it might be dubious, I will say that you can complete Editor and Thief without killing anyone. All you need is an editor with poor depth perception. Finally, we're up to Flood in the LS River. In this mission, Gerald asks us to hashtag steal some meth. Simple! In some missions, you are able to drive over objects and still be able to collect them. However, this wasn't the case. Worse, one of the kind fellas at the Los Santos River was carrying the meth. They made the brave decision to not release said meth until they were dead. After learning that the meth wasn't in the vehicle, I now needed a way to convince the fellow holding the meth to die. Unfortunately, I got impatient, so I gave him some lead to chew on. This was because I would die if I went for the melee. All I have to do was drive back to Gerald. Keep your mouth shut about me, you hear? With that, I completed Flood in the LS River with only one murder. <coughs> However, there was a way to get a hold of the meth without killing anyone. Security Consulting. What can I do for you? Your Meriwether Air Team is on its way. 
The next day, after all of the criminals got better and the man I shot caught him sick, I returned with a Kanjali to patiently wait as the group sex guys, subcontracted by Meriwether, helped murder the criminals. Yes, despite calling Meriwether, they didn't send in Meriwether goons. Thanks Floyd Meriwether. Like everything Meriwether does, they left before finishing. They left alive one biker woman. However, I was wearing one of those bullet absorbing hoodies. With that, I was able to pick up the meth and get back in the Kanjali without requiring a funeral. I then drove to Gerald and finished the mission without directly killing anyone. So if you want to limit the net number of deaths in this mission, you should murder one person. However, if you want to keep your fingerprints off the gun, you can hire some mercenaries to massacre some meth dealing lads and leave alive a biker woman. With that, I will say that you can complete Flood in the OS River by either killing only one person or by directly killing no one and letting Mayweather do the hard work. Yay! So, you can complete the six following missions without killing anyone. Or in the game, Chasers, Check Out Time, Crank Up the Volume, Editor and Thief, and Flood in the OS River. The last one is lazy, but it is what it is. There's not much else to say besides, do not expect another one of these videos up anytime soon. These take a while to record, make, edit, etc. I like to think of this as a spiritual successor to Can You Save That NPC? If you do not know what I'm talking about, good! Uh, thanks Mr. Dark Viper AU for all of those pacifist runs. Those have been more than entertaining, Mr. Speaker. More than entertaining, I might say. I would like for everyone watching to have a good day or night. Except you, Kyle. You know what you did. Damn, Moose, I keep feeling chest pains. You are so right. My director is already riding my ass. I mean, I don't know how much longer it's gonna be before he unloads on me. Right, right. 